Welcome back to Dr. Supercoach and in this video I'll be discussing the upcoming Round 22 Captaincy selections, coming right up. What's up guys, it's JB from Dr. Supercoach and if this is your first appointment, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming updates. Now, today's episode as said off the top there is focused on the captaincy decisions this coming round 22. I cannot believe it's already round 22. There's only three weeks left of captaincy decisions left. Um, I do apologize. Uh, I missed last week's episode. I was in transit on my way to uh, Melbourne to catch up with a few of our uh, Patreons, which was an amazing time. So shout out to everyone who showed up to that and, and had a quiet, responsible beverage with uh, the Dr. Supercoach podcasters. Having said that, I did I do it? Did I have a good captain? I must have had a good. I had a good VC. Yeah, I uh, I tweeted out that I liked the the Bulldogs, um, specifically Bonson and Pelly, and then someone responded to the the tweet and said, you know what, Libertor actually looks good to me as well. And I thought, why don't I consider Liberatore more? Um, his form is absolutely incredible. So 120 average on the year. He's had four captaincy. Um, scores in a row uh, with the one broken up by Colling, which I think is fairly predictable. Um, Hawthorne West Coast Geelong on the run home, so I'll be discussing Liber in this video a little bit later. So we start off with Collingwood versus Geelong now. Usually I'll be talking about how good Nick Dacos is in this matchup. Unfortunately, as we know, Nick Dacos uh, no longer will be playing this season as he sits on my bench for the rest of the year as I have zero trades. Uh, I'm trying to think of what Stewart did against Collingwood. That's right, he got 18 and injured. So um, I don't think Collingwood are a particularly leaky um, forward line, I guess, is the, the way to put that. Obviously, Stewart is, is spending his time in defense. Um, I don't think they're particularly leaky. So as much as I don't mind a Friday VC of Tom Stewart, don't think there's anyone else really applicable in this matchup and honestly I'd be I'd be saving it. I don't think Stewart's like a guaranteed 120 plus. Um, someone who I do think should be or is likely to be a good 120 plus score is Zach Merritt. Now North Melbourne haven't done a lot of tagging so far this year. I think there's a chance uh, with Clarko back maybe Dan Howe goes to a Zach Merritt. I know Zach Merritt is in extremely good form if we can just get onto him as well. Um, when was his last bad score? It was against Geelong. Back-to-back -back captaincy scores, a couple of non, and then three prior to that as well. So um, he scored 137 against them earlier in the season. That was at Marvel Stadium, as is this one. So look, I expect that this to go in a similar way. I expect the Essendon to win. Not quite comfortably. I think North Melbourne are formidable, but um, to at least win the game. And when that happens, generally, uh, Zach Merritt doesn't have any concerns in his scoring. So I think he, so far, is the standout vice captain to me. If you do have LDU, I think there is a discussion to be had regarding um, Davies Uniac form. Um, having said that, I did miss exactly what he scored this week. I think it was still decent. Um, he turns out captaincy scores for fun. So four out of his last five have been captaincy scores. He started the season with all these back-to-back captain scores um, before uh, a subtle 102 and then um, going downhill regressing before the injury. Um, but now since he's come back, um, he obviously sort of came back into it round 16, got thrown back in for a 94 against Adelaide. Four captaincy scores in a row following that and then one 106 against Melbourne. He has Essen and Richmond and Gold Coast to come home. So if you actually, if you're an owner of Davies Uniac, um, I think he's going to be very, very happy. And I actually just hope he doesn't pump his price up too much going into next year because I, I desperately want him in my team. Look, I think if you get wind or if North Melbourne mentioned anything regarding a tag on Zach Merritt, I'd be very much okay with throwing the VC on LDU. And look, if you've got a league matchup or, or something that you think you might need an edge for, um, whatever it is that you're playing for at this time of the season, then I think LDU, there's a lot of instances where LDU outscores Zach Merritt this game. And um, I think if you can convince yourself that it's better for whatever the goal is that you're going for, then I think he's also a very formidable vice captain. Unfortunately, in this next game, the two teams that I like to target um, as a midfield are up against each other and don't really have strong captaincy options now. 
I know Took Miller is back. I know Callum Mills exists, but um, neither of which I would consider strong captaincy options coming into this week. Uh, so I think I'm just going to bypass that one altogether. I know Goulden versus Gold Coast. I wouldn't mind knowing exactly what he scored against Gold Coast earlier in, earlier in the year. Um, not that it means everything. That was 115 to open the season. Um, he is, however, he is streaking. So he's had one um, sub ton since round 14, all of which maybe besides two, the 111 and the 117, have been captaincy scores as well. So um, he is on a hot streak. Gold Coast, Adelaide, Melbourne for him on the run home. Gold Coast, I would picture as one of his probably better matchups. Um, in terms of you know attacking a weak midfield at the SCG as well, I can I can see that as a like, if you don't own LDU, if you think Zach Merritt is going to get run with, um, I can see that as a, a an absolutely another good vice captaincy score. So um, Gold Coast uh, Took Miller does tend to run with players, but I think he'll go on like a Parker or um, I mean Callum Mills and Took might just sit on each other for the entire match, but. Um, whatever happens there, I don't think Golden is the type of player that Took Miller would try to go to, um, considering he goes on the wing a lot, goes at half forward a lot. So um, I think definitely we're going to be seeing uh, a Golden good game there. So I know they start at the exact same time. I've got this on Adelaide time. Apologies, Victorians, but um, those two games start at the exact same time. I still think you, you could be you could weigh up any three of those options convince me of any of them and say this is my reasoning and I would, I would nod my head and agree um so i think we start off with three good captaincy or vice captaincy options there of whichever one you choose above if you do need a fullback option we do have a couple of good ones now Carl carlton versus melbourne <clears throat> i know gorn has been in good form uh, but grundy comes back into the team this week a lot of people have petrarca which i don't mind um i just don't know exactly what goes on with uh, him and his role. I assume Grundy coming back means maybe he plays more midfield. Maybe Clayton Oliver is back. It's just a little bit unknown. Um, I don't trust him with my captaincy at the very least this week. If I do see that he's back in the CBAs, um, then I think he enters re-enters consideration the week after that. But I'm not trusting him with my captaincy. And I know he's still scoring well despite the forward time. But it's a really weird, like, we'll start him in the forward pocket for the first quarter. We'll go down by about five goals, and then we'll put him in the midfield, and we'll score 115 points from there for the, the remaining three quarters. If that goes on for a half or um, or longer, or even just longer than a quarter, um, all of a sudden that, that ceiling starts dropping back. If he plays the entire game in the midfield, which we haven't seen for probably over a month now, um, then obviously he re-enters calculations, but he, he just hasn't done it. Um, he hasn't done it in, in a little while. So the reason I skipped this game, the Gabba um, Brisbane versus Adelaide, is because, again, I do like a couple of options here. Um, I don't dislike either of the Adelaide Crows, Dawson or Laird, despite them both having a uh, forgettable game this week. Just gone 115 for Laird against Brisbane, 120 for Dawson against Brisbane. That was in round 11 at the Adelaide Oval. What I do want to know as well, though, is Lockie Neal. Um, now, Adelaide obviously do have Ben Keys going through that midfield. Neal scored 122 in their first matchup. <clears throat> I also want to see Dunkley. Dunkley in the matchup against Adelaide. Didn't try? Yeah, did 146. Um, I mean, not just for that reason alone, but I think Dunkley is an ex... ex uh, my days, I cannot speak. Is an excellent uh, captain to back up these guys. I know he didn't have a great week, the week just gone. Um, and I know he's, he's pretty much only had like two or three good quarters maybe four good quarters since he came back um but he's back and he's fit and he's at the gabba and it's against adelaide so um i think dunkley is good to go neil i think is potentially taggable both the adelaide crows um do they travel well are adelaide going to get belted at the gabba here um i think both the crows are they're not a must avoid but let's just put them down the pecking order a little bit um but dunkley as a captain i think is um absolutely outstanding if any of these guys fail whichever one you tend to choose um we're going to move on to the west coast Fremantle game now obviously west coast are going to be a target for us they have been all season long they're going to continue to be i don't think sarong is the guy to go with as captain um i will check what he scored against west coast shortly though um brayshaw though whenever it loads 
He's coming off 124. He's in decent form. He's had a couple of captain-esque um, games recently. Is this ever going to load? Is this website okay? Um, so yeah, back-to-back captaincy scores. But I think it, it's just his floor. Um, and then last time he versus West Coast, they tagged him to an 84. They do love tagging Brayshaw. I, I think in his last... I think like four or five games they've tagged him. So he has struggled against West Coast, as you can see. Maybe for that reason, Sarong is the guy. Now, Sarong with the Brayshaw tag went 146 this year. Um, obviously, hard to consider what he's done in prior seasons because he's really just broken out this year. Um, I don't mind either option. I just don't think either option is spectacular. And if they do tag Brayshaw... Um, we could see Sarong go well, but look at Sarong's form pretty much since the buys. 93, that's the game before the buy. 108, 84, 104, 90, 101, 110 with a 138 and a 126 sprinkled in there. Um, so not a trustworthy captain for me. I actually think I, I just bypass this one unless I have Luke Jackson, who I consider um, actually a decent captaincy option. Cannot believe that sentence is leaving my mouth. Um, yeah, I, I think I just bypassed that one altogether. And I know it's West Coast. I know that's one of my targets. Um, but I have a lot more faith in Dunkley. And I have more faith in a couple of guys from the Bulldogs Hawthorne game. Now, Finn McGuinness has gone back to his regular tagging role. Josh Kelly um, was his huge scalp. Now, I think Bontempelli, I mean, if you look at this, he, he is absolutely the most informed player in the competition. Um, he had that 101, which is like a, a Callum Ward after quarter time tag. Um, between that 153, 126, 131, 123, 114, 169. I could go back for the entire season. He has not scored a sub ton since round three. Um, he's so, so, so in form. I think he's the tag candidate for this game. Uh, and for that reason, I don't want to captain him. I think it's it's quite obvious that Finn McGuinness would go there. I don't mind the captaincy of English. Um, I know Hawks, Rucks are pretty competitive, generally speaking. Um, but down at Tasmania, I don't know. Um, I think English is a good captaincy option. And I also do think Liberatore is a good captaincy option as well. Um, I can't get over how good this guy has been. Four of his last five have been captaincy scores. Five of his last six... Uh, and then if you keep going back, there are captaincy scores riddled throughout the season. He really does have the, the one of the highest floors in the entire league. Um, I think he's a great captaincy shout for the Sunday. Um, and I, I would bypass Bontempelli. I don't mind English. Um, I think I prefer Dunkley to English. Um, but I prefer English to anyone in that game, uh, the Fremantle West Coast game. And over the both of the uh, the Crows boys as well and Lockie Neal. So um, English quite high up there for me. Richmond versus St. Kilda. These guys just don't have captainable options. I'm sure Jack still does okay here, um, but we just saw this week exactly what he can churn out if he's not interested. Uh, and Taranto just hasn't had the form. Um, his form, God, would be one of the worst in the AFL. So he's had one ton in his last five matches, six matches, one ton, absolutely uncaptainable. That was against West Coast as well. Um, so no dice there. And St. Kilda are the team that give up halfback scores, of which Richmond have good ones, but none that are really super coach relevant. That finishes us off with Port Adelaide versus GWS. Um, look, I think, I, I mean, there's no one that's an option there. Connor Rosie and Zach Butters probably go pretty well, especially being at Adelaide Oval. But do we want to captain either of these guys? I don't think so. Um, look, I think Zach Butters is captainable, um, but I don't think he's better than the options mentioned above. So um, I think to, I'm going to summarize by saying I'm likely to go Zach Merritt, um, potentially Errol Golden. Um, if I had LDU, I would, I would probably actually go LDU as my number one option. But because I don't, I'll be going Zach Merritt slash Errol Golden into I don't have Josh Dunkley otherwise that would be quite easy for me um, but otherwise I would go into Liberatore um, even if I had Liber and English I think I'd still prefer prefer Liber um, marginally um, marginally prefer Liber but you could definitely convince me either way on that one um, so and it also depends who Hawthorne name if they go a potential double big man tandem combination type of thing maybe they can slow English down for a quarter I'm not quite sure um, but regardless of what they name I think he's definitely captainable um, but whether he is better than Liberatore I'm, I'm not quite certain so 
um, yeah, pretty easy one for me. I say easy. I know I've waffled through about 13 options, but um, I, th- I think there's been much tougher weeks there uh, this year. Welcome back to the Dr. Super Coach podcast. You're on once again with Tom Phillips. The finals of the 2023 Super Coach season are underway. Cheezo J. Bang Pistol, I want to say thanks for the great year. Cheers. Good day. Question of the day, as usual, is who did you think of, who do you like that I haven't mentioned here? There's always one or two names that I get a message about. What about this guy? What about this guy? You didn't mention him in the video. Does that mean he's not relevant? No, it's probably just because I haven't thought about it. Um, I do apologize for that, but please do comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to you with my thoughts on your player. Um, If you did enjoy this video, please do support us. You can support us via our Patreon link down below or our merchandise link down below. Um, Everything obviously contributed there is much appreciated. I'll catch you guys next week with just two more weeks left to pick our captains.